Hi, Shannon here at Tamarack Nature Center. Welcome to Sticks and Stones and Other Loose Parts. Loose parts. Hmm, that might be a term you've never heard of before. What are loose parts? Well, loose parts are a lot of times things that people would call garbage or junk. Things that don't really belong anywhere. They're maybe just kind of laying around loose in your house. Things like rocks. Sticks. I've got a pine cone and some acorn caps, uh, random paper cups, popsicle sticks. It's a good day for a popsicle. Um, egg cartons, dried beans, random gems that you don't know what to do with. Loose parts are those kinds of things that are laying around that don't really have a purpose maybe, but today we are here to give you a purpose for them. We are talking about making games. First I would like to define make a game because a game doesn't have to be just a recreation of something you already know like let's make a Monopoly game. No, a game can really be anything. A game just needs to be something that occupies you. Maybe it occupies you mentally, maybe it occupies you physically, maybe both. It should probably be kind of fun, otherwise you're not gonna to wanna to play it. But a game can be something you do by yourself, it can be something you do with a friend, it could be something you do with a group of friends. So we are gonna show you how to utilize some of these loose parts to make some, um, some games from around the world. I have a bunch of different stuff here in front of me today that come, and the, the ideas come from different places. So one of my favorites here is this badminton game that we've made. Uh, We've used a cork and some feathers and a little bit of hot glue to make our birdie. If you don't have that, you can make a paper ball. I'm gonna show you how to make a paper ball later or use a ping pong ball or something else light, maybe a pom pom. And then you need a stick. We found these sticks with these good Ys in them. And then we wrapped this paper ribbon around them. You could use, you could probably use regular ribbon if you have that around your house or uh, some chunky yarn maybe. You just need to kind of weave it back and forth around the Y. We did use some hot glue. You can see that there's some hot glue there to kind of hold it down. And so you have your badminton racket and your birdie. And it's good if you can find a friend, you guys can bounce this back and forth. But if you are by yourself today, you can also just kind of hit it up in the air. See how many times, I'm not doing very good here. Now it's on the ground. See how many times you can hit it around. Here's my other one up in the air. And you can make your own game out of it. So that's badminton. Uh, I have this cool game here called Mancala. Some of you have maybe played Mancala before. Uh, it's a really fun game to play with a friend. There are a lot of different rules to Mancala. I've seen, depending on what region it comes from, I've seen some different rules. Basic rule is you're gonna be moving the beans around the board to get them into your end cap. You wanna get it into your end cap and you just sort of move the beans around and around. You can also make your own out of an egg carton. I have this egg carton. I ripped the top off the egg carton. Um, it's already got the 12 little cups. If you want to make little end caps, you can cut the ends off the egg carton and tape them on there, or you can just put a little yogurt cup at the end. You can use anything. You can use beans, you can use rocks, you can use glass gems, whatever you have laying around your house. Uh, we started with four in each compartment, so you just need to find a lot of something. And you can have your own Mancala game. That is super fun. Our day campers love these things. They're great. Uh, I have a fun Native American game here called Papasi Kawan. It's another two-person game, although you probably could play with more than two people. Uh, e you each need a stick and a billet. That is what this is called. We just found shorter sticks and tied a string to them. And so you kind of drape it over the end and your friend stands off in the distance over there and you throw the billet and they try to catch it. If I had a friend over there, they probably wouldn't have caught that. It wasn't a very good throw. Here's another fun Native American game. I'm gonna use a rock for this one. It's called the moccasin game. And you just need some shoes. They don't have to be moccasins. Sandals don't work. They gotta have toes. You take your rock and you try to trick your friends into where you put the rock. 
right? So I'm going to just slide my rock in and out of these moccasins here and try to make you think that I'm dropping it somewhere. Now you got to guess. Is it in one, two, three, or four? What do you think? Mm, I heard someone say two. Let's see. Nope, no rock in two. Who else has a guess? Three? Let's try three. Oh, there it is, number three. So whoever guesses it gets to be the hider of the rock. You can play that forever. Moccasin game. Uh, another fan favorite right here, Kendama. Now, uh, Kendama comes in a lot of different versions as well. Again, depending on what region of the world it comes from. Uh, this is a single cup Kendama. I've seen some really fancy ones with two or three cups and a spike on the end. Uh, the, the basic principle is the same for all of them. You just need to get the, cup, the ball in the cup. Clearly, not very good at it. Oh, so you just flip it. I'm not doing it. I got it earlier, but I'm gonna show you how to make your own because um, fancy, you can get them on wherever. But all you need is a paper cup, popsicle stick, this is a craft stick. I didn't actually eat a popsicle, unfortunately. I could really go for one right now, but you can just eat a popsicle and then use the stick. And you need some tape and some string. So I've got one here that I made. <clears throat> I used a pom-pom for this one. This one's actually a little easier to play. Ah, oh, look at that, I got that one. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to make a paper ball though. Not everybody has pom-poms. You just need some paper, wad it up, some tape. Uh, this is the paper ball you can also use for your badminton set. Um, this size would probably work well for badminton. The, the beauty of your, your tape ball here is you can pretty much make it whatever size you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay, I just wrapped a couple pieces of tape around. It's fine. So I've got my cup. Good excuse to buy popsicles. Mom, I need to make some games. Can you go buy me some popsicles? Right? Everybody likes to eat popsicles. Here you go. Tape the stick onto the outside of the cup. Okay, so I've got my cup. Uh, I just happen to have a little piece of string here. Since I made a tape ball, I'm just gonna tape the string to the tape ball. When I used the pom-pom, I tied it. I just tied it around the middle of the pom-pom. That worked pretty well. But I've already got a bunch of tape on here, so. And use tape. You can use packaging tape, masking tape, duct tape, whatever kind of tape you have around is fine. Put a little tape on the end of the string. Tape that. I'm going to tape it to the inside. You could tape it to the outside, whatever you want to do. There we go. My very own kendama. I didn't measure this string. I just sort of grabbed a piece of string that I had. This is just hemp beading cord, but um, you probably don't want it any, what's that? Maybe a foot long, probably minimum. This is probably a little less than a foot. 12 to 15 inches should do it. You've got your own. If you wanna to try to make a fancier version, you know, you could put like two cups together or something. Imagination, use your imagination. You can create whatever kind of games you want. Go through your house, find the loose parts, all of the stuff that nobody wants, and go ahead and be creative and make yourself some games. Stay tuned later this week. Uh, Stacy's gonna be coming at you with some kind of recycled twists on a little bit more modern games that everybody loves to play. So until next time, see you later.